Hello my dear budding doctors I welcome you all to my YouTube channel and Medicos Notes So today we will be starting with the upper limb and the first question we will be dealing with is a breast or mammary gland So the video will be in two parts and the first part will be dealing with the situation, extent, deep relation and structure of the breast And in second part we will deal with the blood supply, lymphatic drainage and applied anatomy So let's get started to the first video So first we will see the introduction of the breast Here actually there are three points of Okay, and the first point is that it is an important structure present in the pectoral region. So now what is pectoral region? Pectoral region is a region that lies in front of chest. So in pectoral region an important structure is the breast. Second point is that the breast is a modified sweat gland. Okay, And the third point tells that it is formed in both sexes but it is well developed in female and forms an important accessory organ in female reproductive system. So that's it for the introduction of the breast. Let's move on to the situation of the breast. So here the breast lies in the superficial fascia and on the deep fascia in the pectoral region. So what does this sentence mean actually? So here you can see this is a breast and the breast is covered by the skin and it is located in the superficial fascia and below you can see the deep fascia. So the breast lies in the superficial fascia and below there is deep fascia so on the deep fascia in the pectoral region okay the next point is that the breast is divided into four quadrants what are the quadrants upper medial upper lateral lower medial and lower lateral so i'll explain you considering this as a breast this is a nipple this is the areola this is the upper side this is the lower side medial side and lateral side okay so now considering this into four quadrants this is the upper medial side this is a lower medial side this is the upper lateral side and this is a lower lateral side okay so here these are the four quadrants of the breast Moving to the third point, a small extension of upper lateral quadrant called the axillary tail of spins. So here, this is the upper lateral quadrant. This is the small extension in upper lateral quadrant. So this extension in upper lateral quadrant is called the axillary tail of spins. So this axillary tail of spins pass through an opening in deep fascia and lies in axilla. So this axillary tail of spin pass through an opening in the deep fascia. So we all know that below the superficial fascia there is deep fascia. So it pass through an opening in deep fascia and lies in the axilla. And the opening is called foramen of Langer. So what is foramen of Langer? This opening in the deep fascia is called as foramen of Langer. Okay. So that's it for the situation of the breast. Let's move on to the extent of the breast. Here vertically it extends from second rib to sixth rib and horizontally it extends from mid axillary line to lateral border of sternum. So see here this is a second rib this is a sixth rib. So vertically it extends from second rib to sixth rib and horizontally it extends from mid axillary line. This is the mid axillary line. This is the lateral border of sternum. This is the lateral border of sternum. So horizontally it extends from mid axillary line to lateral border of sternum. Let's see now about the deep relations of the breast. The first point is that the breast lies on the pectoral fascia. So what is pectoral fascia? Pectoral fascia is nothing but the deep fascia. So other name of pectoral fascia is deep fascia. I have already said that the breast lies in the superficial fascia and on the deep fascia. Okay. So that is the first point. Next point is that still deeper there are three muscles pectoralis major, serratus anterior and external oblique muscle of the abdomen so in deep relation to the breast there are three muscle first one is the pectoralis major next one is the serratus anterior and the third one is external oblique muscle of abdomen so that is the second point moving to the third point the breast is separated from pectoral fascia by loose areolar tissue so this is superficial fascia this is the deep fascia or pectoral fascia so the breast is separated from the pectoral fascia by loose 
loose areolar tissue so this green sketched region they will be loose areolar tissue okay and the space formed there is called retro mammary space the space formed there is called retro mammary space so now what is the function of this loose areolar tissue because of the presence of loose areolar tissue the normal breast can be freely moved over the pectoralis major so the movement of the breast is aided by the loose areolar tissue so that is the third point so that's it for the deep relation of the breast moving on to the structure of the breast the structure of the breast is divided into skin parenchyma and stroma so first let's start with the skin of the breast the first point is that below the center of the breast there is a conical projection called nipple so not exactly in the center but just below the center of the breast there is a conical projection called nipple so considering this to be a breast the middle dark conical projection is called the nipple okay that is the first point the second point is that the nipple is pierced by 15 to 20 lactiferous ducts so you can see in this diagram this is the nipple this is the nipple and it is pierced by lactiferous ducts can you see these are the lactiferous ducts so 15 to 20 lactiferous ducts like these pierce the nipple so that is the second point now moving on to the third point it contains circular and longitudinal smooth muscle fibers which make the nipple stiff so the stiffness of the nipple is contributed by the circular and longitudinal smooth muscle fibers fourth point is that few modified sweat and sebaceous glands are also present so the skin of the breast contains few modified sweat and sebaceous glands fifth point is that it is rich in nerve supply and has many sense organ at the termination of nerve fibers so the skin of the breast is rich in nerve supply that is the fifth point moving on to the areola of the breast the first point is that the skin surrounding the base of the nipple is pigmented and forms a circular area called areola so in this diagram the circular pigmented area surrounding the nipple is called areola okay the pigmented circular area surrounding the nipple is called areola that is the first point and this areola is rich in modified sebaceous gland so modified sebaceous gland is rich in areola okay so moving on to the next point these become enlarged during pregnancy and lactation to form tubercles of montgomery what are these these means the modified sebaceous glands so these modified sebaceous gland they become enlarged during pregnancy and lactation to form tubercles of montgomery that is the second point now moving on to the third point oily secretion from these glands lubricate the nipple and areola and prevent them from cracking during lactation so during lactation there is heavy chance of cracking of the nipple and areola and it is prevented by the oily secretion from these sebaceous glands okay so that is the third point now moving on to the fourth point the areola also contains some sweat glands and accessory mammary glands so apart from the sebaceous gland the areola also contains some sweat glands and accessory mammary glands okay that is the fourth point now the fifth point the skin of the areola and nipple is devoid of hair so the skin of the areola and nipple does not have hair that is the fifth point the sixth point is that below the areola lie the lactiferous sinus where the stored milk is seen so the milk is stored in the lactiferous sinus okay now see in this diagram you can see this is the nipple this is the lactiferous duct and this is the lactiferous sinus this is the lactiferous sinus can you see so that is the lactiferous sinus and there the milk is stored okay so that's it for the areola of the breast moving on to the parenchyma of the breast first point is that in this layer is found a compound tubular alveolar gland which secretes milk so the actual gland which secretes milk is found in the parenchyma of the breast that is the first point okay now second point is that the gland consists of 15 to 20 lobes now this is the gland these are the lobes these are the lobes so 15 to 20 lobes like these are found in the parenchyma of the breast that is the second point third point is that in each lobe there is a cluster of alveoli now this is a lobe and these are the alveoli so in each lobe there is a cluster of alveoli 
all these lobes contain alveoli so in each lobe there is a cluster of alveoli that is the third point moving on to the fourth point the gland is drained by lactiferous ducts which converge towards the nipple and open on it these glands are drained by the lactiferous ducts which converge towards the nipple and open on it so here the milk is secreted it is stored in the lactiferous sinus and it is drained through the lactiferous duct so that's it for the parenchyma of the breast now let's talk about the stroma of the breast. The first point is that this layer forms supporting framework of the gland. So the supporting framework of the gland is provided by the stroma of the breast. That is the first point. The next point is that this layer is partly fibrous and partly fatty. So the stroma is partly fibrous and partly fatty. That is the second point. The third point is that the fibrous stroma forms a septa known as suspensory ligaments of Cooper. So what are suspensory ligaments of Cooper? The fibrous stroma forms a septa and that is known as suspensory ligaments of Cooper. Now see here, can you see the green color ligament? So these are the suspensory ligaments of Cooper. These are the suspensory ligaments of Cooper. So what is the function of suspensory ligament of Cooper? They anchor the skin and gland to pectoral fascia. So this is pectoral fascia and this is the skin and the gland. They anchor the skin and the gland to the pectoral fascia. Okay. So the suspensory ligaments of Cooper anchor skin and the gland to the pectoral fascia pectoral fascia okay so that is the third point now moving on to the fourth point the main bulk of the mammary gland is due to the fatty stroma so the main bulk of the mammary gland is provided by the fatty stroma that is the fourth point fifth point is that it is distributed all over the breast except beneath the nipple and areola so the stroma is distributed all over the breast except the nipple and areola that's it for the stroma of the breast okay so guys we have completed the first part of breast or mammary gland i hope you all have understood if you have any doubts or suggestions you can ask me in the comments below the next part will be on the blood supply lymphatic drainage and applied anatomy of the breast so that's it guys thank you bye bye